Welcome to That's Good Broncos. I am Brandon. If you're a high profile lawyer, I would keep my dick holstered for a while, Perna. Andy Reid is Jeffrey Tubin. Patrick Mahomes is Rudy Giuliani. And the Broncos are their penises. We just keep getting beat while everybody watches and laughs. It's the laughing that hurts, guys. It's the laughing that hurts. Drew Locke said he would be happy to be the Darth Vader to Kansas City, but I'd rather see him be someone more evil who shows no mercy, like the meat sweats you get after 17 racks of ribs at the tailgate. No, 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 like Ramsey Bolton from Game of Thrones. We forget Ramsey Bolton cut a guy's penis off. And if Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes really are Tubin and Giuliani, we need a sick son of a bastard like Bolton to free the Broncos from their grip. Yes, you are watching a football show. Today I preview Broncos and Chiefs, uh, and I do not guarantee that this is the last mention of penis. So, if <laughs> football, whew, that's good Broncos. Please subscribe here to That's Good Broncos for Broncos podcasts. You can download the That's Good Broncos podcast and subscribe to it wherever you listen to your podcasts. iTunes, that's the only place I know. Is there Are there other places? Anyway, the podcast, if you want to listen to all of these episodes, download it. Let's start with a shout out to Brandon, Brandon McMahon. You'd think I could say his name, if we have the same name. Shout out to Brandon McManus, who is coming off another Special Teams Award, AFC Player of the Week. And this is one week after he won AFC Special Teams Player of the Month. And he might be on track to win Guy Who Tricks My Wife Into Thinking He Is Me. It's not just the shared first name or the beard, it's that deep V, that deep neck V he gave us leaving those top buttons undone in his press conference. Dear God, Brandon, stay away from my family. All right, this game, we've got a little bit of quarterbacks to talk about. Now, do I believe Patrick Mahomes is one of the best QBs in the game? Of course I do. He genuinely impresses me when he's on the field. He's the anti-Tom Brady. If Tom Brady is, say, Anakin Skywalker, good, at first, but then turned evil, then Mahomes really is Kermit the Frog. A devious leader from the beginning whose sexual fetishes have been kept secret by those who pull the strings, but for whatever reason is generally respected by everyone. Kermit the Frog, you sick son of a bitch, I see you. I see you for who you are. That said, I too am suffering from Mahomes fatigue. Symptoms include wanting to punch your television every time another amazing quarterback who's been in the league longer than Mahomes has one of their impressive throws called Mahomes-like. Conversely, whenever Mahomes makes a throw plenty of other quarterbacks make, and you see a tweet that says, only Mahomes. <laughs> and of course, the 10,000 State Farm commercials. This, this is a Liberty Biberty show. We're in good hands. Now, right now, I think Russell Wilson is playing better than any quarterback in the league, but Mahomes has a better all-around team surrounding him. Second best quarterbacks right now, it's a three-way tie. It is between Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Ben Roethlisberger. Ben and Mahomes have the most similar stats this season. Each QB has just one pick, 109 and 110 passer rating, seven and eight sacks taken, and they're both constantly around Hines. Yet nobody is talking about how great Roethlisberger is, even though he's actually probably the comeback player of the year right now. So, since I have underplayed Mahomes' talents, he will probably have the greatest statistical game of his career. I am that good at cursing the team I love. Drew Locke, I barely know ye. I think you might be great, Drew, but it's still a debate, Drew, because your ball catchers lead the leagues in drops, Drew. Denver has the worst drop rate in the NFL, and that ugly problem reared its head against the Patriots. The good news, 
That shit ain't on Horsecock Lock. This week, he needs to play basically the same as he did against the Patriots, but make better decisions late in the game. I already ripped Pat Shermer's play calling, but it is Locke actually out there making the throws, and his second interception last weekend, he threw into double coverage when he had Jerry Judy wide open on the left and Deshaun Hamilton with a couple steps on his man to the right. Not that that matters for Hamilton. Locke chose to throw to Tim Patrick in the middle, surrounded by two Patriots defenders. Why? Probably because he knew Tim Patrick was the only guy out there actually catching the fucking ball for him. But let's not live in the past. The Broncos won. Even if Locke's ball catchers don't betray him, I'd be an idiot to say he had the advantage over Mahomes. So until Denver finds its skeleton key, that Mahomes remains unlocked in Denver. Broncos offense versus the opponent's defense. I hope two important things happened at the Broncos practice this week. One, Pat Shermer designed some plays that incorporate crossing routes, picks, and bubble screens where his quarterback can make two quick reads and throw some short, high success passes. Two, the wide receivers coach made every ball catcher catch 100 contested passes every day this week before they could leave the field and go back into the comforts of the training facility. Do you know which Broncos ball catcher has zero drops this season? Tight end Noah Fant. And he may be back in the lineup on Sunday. If Albert O can make the tough catches, the Broncos will have a matchup nightmare for any defense that tries to stop them. Together, Albert O and Noah Fant equal one and a half Travis Kelseys, or as I like to call that, Jason Kelsey. Garrett Bowles, he has received Pro Football Focus's highest grade on the Broncos offense in three of the last five games. Rookie center Lloyd Cushenberry had his first game, but the bad news was that Dalton Reisner was injured against the Patriots. Uh, the Bowles is a flame, and the Cush is starting to hit which means the Broncos line is legit. Something I don't think I've been able to say before this Chiefs win streak began, which was under a different presidential administration. Back when a president's job was to roast football teams by calling Brandon McManus their best offensive weapon. Holy shit, nothing has changed. To honor the offensive line that makes me high just looking at it, I've come up with the mile high offensive line Rap. Goes a little something like this. Mm. Give me that beat. Okay, I'll just I'll do it out the I'll do it without the beat. Mm. 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 The Broncos line is on the rise. Nur. So smoke your bowls of your cush. I've got a gram hidden in my tush. Grab your berries, this line is scary. They're out to slaughter men. Damar Dotson. Couldn't figure out how to work you into the freestyle, Damar. Sorry. Denver needs to make sure Mr. Colorado gets 100 rushing yards in this game. When Philip Lindsay does, the Broncos are 6 0. Is it causation or correlation? I don't know. I don't even know what those words mean. Means. I don't. But as a precaution, they should probably just bench Melvin Gordon on purpose and see what happens when Lindsey gets 200 yards, which could happen because the Chiefs are giving up a third worst 145.3 rushing yards per game. That's how you beat them. And if Shermer doesn't dial up a run first attack to keep Mahomes where he belongs on the sideline, I will personally fire Pat. Then we've got the Broncos defense versus the Chiefs offense. My concern, Travis Kelsey, who may have single-handedly beat the Buffalo Bills for the Chiefs. He could do what the Broncos tight ends could not, catch touchdowns, and he only needed one hand to make some of his grabs. Kelsey is just one of three players right now with 450 plus yards and five or more touchdowns this season. He also blamed himself for their loss to the Raiders after he was arguably the best player on the team that day, scoring two touchdowns, basically acting like Liam Neeson at the end of Schindler's List. Side note, why does Travis Kelsey look like the serial killer from Heat? And that's a compliment too. A Denver defender though on the rise? 
It's full chub for the dub. Per Nick Cosmiter on Twitter, Bradley Chubb has created nine combined pressures since week four, according to Sport Radar, tied for Shaquille Barrett and Aaron Donald for the NFL lead during that stretch. The difference, Chubb has only played two games in that span, while Barrett and Donald have each played three. The instinct for Chubb might be to rush off the edge as hard as possible. It's dangerous when a Chubb gets that hard. But with Mahomes' ability to get outside of the pocket in the Chiefs' ex excellent screen game, it might make more sense to play contain and sacrifice sacks for small gains. Bill Belichick knew when he played Le'Veon Bell uh, on the Steelers that Bell was patient enough to wait for defenders to overcommit and exploit those holes. So the defense has to be even more patient and allow short runs rather than trying to get tackles for a loss. Sounds counterintuitive, I know, but it's worked before. Somehow Le'Veon Bell isn't that high on the list of players to worry about. So you can't sell out just to stop him in this matchup. The Broncos defensive line as a whole was great last week. Chubb earned a 91.1 grade from Pro Football Focus. Shelby Harris had the highest grade at 91.8. And the unsung hero is Deshaun Jackson Williams at 80.2. Essentially, this year's version of Mike Purcell. Now a huge factor in this game is the health of Kansas City's offensive line. They lost Kalichi Osimile for the season, and now they're waiting on the status of Mitchell Schwartz. If Schwartz is out, I think the Broncos can make Mahomes uncomfortable. Schwartz is out, which is big. Ain't that right, baby? Ain't that right, baby? Mitchell Schwartz, out, along with Sammy Watkins, out. <laughs> the Broncos' defensive line has been playing well, even without Jarrell Casey, Von Miller, and Draymond Jones, who is off of IR now and in the 21-day window to be moved back into the lineup. What we're about to find out, though, is how good the Broncos' secondary really is. It looked great against the Jets and the weaponless Patriots offense. This, though, is their biggest challenge since facing the Steelers week two. OJ Moutier, let's ball out, baby. Then we've got some X factors that could change the course of this game. Can Malik Reed carry over two strong performances in a row and collapse the pocket around Patrick Mahomes? He sacked Cam Newton twice last week. Cam wasn't reading the defense, but the defense was reading him. Malik Reed joke. Double Travis Kelsey in the red zone. I don't care how the Chiefs score inside of the 20 as long as it's not Travis Kelsey. The touch pass to Hill, a screen to Edwards Allaire. Even Le'Veon Bell getting a piggyback ride from Daniel Kilgore into the end zone. They're all preferable to letting Travis Kelsey beat you again. But the biggest X factor is that Patrick Mahomes posted a gender reveal video on the socials. Just like me, he is going to be a girl dad. Unlike me, his $500 million contract means his daughter will be going to college. But he picked the wrong week to announce the gender of his child. My girl is already here, and she accurately predicted a Broncos win over the Patriots in my Insta story last week. Now, I will use her like a pawn to combat the positive momentum of Mahomes' announcement. My daughter's powers shall prevail as she wills Denver to their first win over Kansas City in a million days. That face don't lie. I'd be remiss if I didn't announce that the Pepsi Center, home of the Nuggets, Avalanche, and Taylor Swift concerts, has dropped the naming rights to the arena, and it is now Ball Arena. Paging Manscaped, Paging Manscaped. Here in Denver, we also have Dick's Sporting Goods Park, making this great city host of Dick and Ball Stadiums. As soon as I get a few hundred million dollars, I will rena rename Mile High to Gooch Stadium making Denver the first city to completely cover male genitals. And I told you I would mention penises again. And my final prediction, well, I had the balls, I had the ball stadium to predict the Broncos would beat the Patriots last week. And I'm riding the wave of irrational confidence into this week. This is the week the Broncos end the streak that started in 2015. Denver plays enough defense to keep the Chiefs in the high 20s and get a timely takeaway 
while those tight window throws Drew Locke was hitting last week start getting caught. The Broncos get a huge upset and win 30 to 26 at home. 26 is the key number you gotta hold the Chiefs to. 